Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now, yesterday, I rose in this House to challenge the government on their use of backbench questions. So today, I am going to show Albertans what it looks like yeah. when an MLA holds the government to account for their constituents. Hey, oh. To the Minister of Education. A constituent asked me why the curriculum survey was so long, technical, and complex, and if the questions were designed to elicit the government's desired outcomes. Can you tell the House how many surveys were abandoned partway through and whether this exercise is just cover for curriculum changes that have already been decided? Minister of Education. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I think there was a little question at the end there. Um, the uh, curriculum survey was the biggest interaction that uh, Alberta education has ever engaged with the Alberta public in the history of this province. We had more than 32,000 respondents, of uh, which 25,000 filled out the Part A and the Part B. The Part B gives us valuable information that will then come back to us in the spring, and then we'll go back to the public again. It's a very transparent process because we take curriculum development very seriously. So fully a quarter of people didn't finish the survey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Another important issue in Calgary Elbow is the PDD Safety Standards Consultation Report, which was released in late October. My constituents want an update on the progress of some of the key recommendations, specifically recommendation number one for a neutral and independent body external from government to undertake a review of the PDD program to the Minister of Human Services. Has the review started? Who is involved? What are the terms of reference? And when will they file their report? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Member, for the question. Uh, PDD, uh, safety of the person with developmental disability, we took it very seriously. That's why we consulted Albertans and 2,000 Albertans raised their voice and they felt heard. And we will be working on the report as a whole and with a view to make uh, this province inclusive and give opportunity with, to per persons with developmental disability to contribute meaningfully uh, to the province and live as independently and as safely as possible. Second supplemental. Sadly, Mr. Speaker, that is nowhere near an answer. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, we saw two more tragic signs of the public health crisis caused by fentanyl and opiate addiction. Statistics were released showing 15 deaths from highly toxic carfentanil and the heartbreaking story of two parents who likely died of a drug overdose in my constituency of Calgary Elbow, leaving four children orphaned. To the Minister of Health. You are the NDP. You are supposed to care for people in need. Will you stop parroting talking points written by bureaucrats, do what you know is right, and declare a public health emergency? Well, your board, the Associate Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for the question. Uh, you know, our hearts really do go out to all those who've lost a loved one to fentanyl, and we know that the best thing that we can do to support them and their loved one's memories is to expand access to opioid treatments that work. That is why we're working diligently to expand community-based access to opioid dependency treatment, as well as working with community partners across the province to open supervised consumption services, which we know will make a difference in saving lives.